Hello, welcome to the Play Well Cup. My name is James. And I'm Jason. And we are bringing you StarCraft action from Tirador Keep in week 7, the quarterfinals of the Play Well Cup. And right now we have for you Sega Studios Australia versus Fire Monkeys Team Number 1. And up the top, we have playing for Sega Studios Australia as the Blue Terran <laughs> Disky. And down the bottom, as the Teal Protoss, we have a Borson. And then across the other side of the map, we have playing as the Yellow Terran, Mars Spider for Fire Monkeys Team 1. His teammate will be Ceiling Cat playing as the Green Terran. And I did notice that Disky, instead of rolling his usual Zerg, rolled random this game and has come up with Terran. Which so I believe, I uh, <laughs> as he said in the last chat, that is his weakness. Yep, that's the race. The one race he did not want was Terran. And that is <laughs> exactly what we have here. So this is game number three of the best of five. A spoiler alert for the first two games. Sega Studios have taken both of those out, so... It's a do or die situation now for Fire Monkeys. They need to come up with the goods, make something happen, and stay in this competition. Well, they've got the best possible chance to do that. If uh, Disky is not particularly confident in Terran, I'd be really interested to see what happens here. Does he know anything about how to build units or <laughs> upgrade them or do things like Stim, for example? <laughs> because I sure as hell <laughs> don't. <laughs> If I got You're Terran, right. I'd be like, uh, um, build Hellions. Just build Marines. Everyone knows you build Marines. Yeah, but Marines are only good up until when you upgrade them and give them things like yeah, shields and uh, drugs. <laughs> that does help. <laughs> I do love this wall, though, actually, by Fire Monkeys. I didn't realize you could um, almost wall off completely. It looks like there's enough, there's a gap there that one supply depot will plug up completely, but. That then makes both, you've got one safe expansion up the top of the base here, but that then makes the natural down on the ground pretty safe as well. So I do really, really like that wall. Yeah, these guys have been always awesome at doing the team wall off. Yep. Consistently, they've been able to do this, and I, I'm really quite impressed with the way that they can uh, coordinate this together. I yep. suppose that's the advantage of being double Terran too. Yeah, makes so much wall action. Mm, exactly, you can wall all day. You could wall across half the map if you really wanted to. The Great Wall of Ceiling Cat and Mars Spider. <laughs> the Walk <laughs> Mars Cat Dynasty. <laughs> or possibly Ceiling Spider. That's too that scary though. Terrifying. Yeah. <laughs> it sure is. <laughs> Alright, we're seeing pretty common though um, on both sides here. We've got a Borsern expanding to the safe, Ceiling Cat doing the same thing on the other side. But uh, the difference here is that there is not a complete wall on this side, um, and Ceiling Cat knows that. He's just scouted that, although this SCV... Run home, man, run home. Keep going, son. Uh-oh, he's not going to make it. No, he's not. He's not <laughs> you know, going he's home not... for Christmas. <laughs> exactly, that poor SCV. Well, he's also not going to spot this command center, but I feel pretty confident if I were them that that was going up. Meanwhile, Disky's planting a bunker out the front of Ceiling Cat and uh, Mars Spider's wall. I'm not sure as to serve what purpose. <laughs> <laughs> there are no units to get in the bunker. Nope, there are not. And the bunker is dying. <laughs> Disky salvage now salvaging it. He is going to get the salvage off, so at least that's something. Alright. Maybe he's just but keeping them on their toes. <laughs> he's keeping me on my toes. Yeah, that is a mark of a guy who does not play Terran often, I believe. Yeah. Call me or... crazy, but yeah, it could be possibly <laughs> a slight tell to their and opponents. Have... Yeah, both teams have got either a supply depot or a pylon watching those backdoor rocks, so well aware of those rocks on this map, which can uh, makes rather a large path into your base, so it's a very good idea to keep keep an eye on those and see what they're up to, but for now, it looks like both teams playing pretty defensively. Definitely. We're not seeing any early aggression here. Up to the six-minute mark odd. And at the moment, it's mostly just workers and slight bits of defense. Disky's got a bunker up here at their front line, so they look pretty safe at the moment. Ditto on the other side. 
Mouse Spider, I think, um, could have even thrown down this command center a little bit earlier. Um, he wanted to get safe with these kind of uh, marines and marauders that he's got here, but um, I reckon they would have been right like a couple of minutes ago to even just chuck that down preemptively. Yep. Especially with that wall of goodness. It's a pretty good wall. But Across it, the other side of the map, though, a yep. Borsan going for something tricky. He's got double Stargate happening and upgrading air weapons level one at the Cyber Core. Oh my. And BH and Man does not like the chances. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Observer Chat. <laughs> <laughs> well, now we've got four Stargates, and what anti air do we have over for Fire Monkeys? They do have some Marines. Mm hmm. But. That's about it. Not enough. Especially when you're versing Protoss, it's, you always love to throw in a pretty heavy Marauder mix just because Marauders eat through Stalkers and you know, are just generally good to have. But that is not going to help them at all uh, if there's a whole bunch of Void Rays or the like coming out. There are two Stargates here, though, from Mars Spider. So um, one going up with a Reactor. Uh, it's all going nice. to come down to what comes out of here. Is it going to be... It'll be Vikings. Mars loves be... Vikings. He does, he does, but... Uh, he does also have quite a few... Well, he's got a handful of ground units. Is he going to support those, or is he going to go Vikings? That's the real question. Unanswered as of yet, but we'll keep an eye on that. In the meantime, though, just a little scout here from Ceiling Cat. What was that? Was that a little bunker that went up? <laughs> yeah, so Ceiling Cat was doing the same sort of shenanigans that Disky was trying at the start. Uh-huh. Just, just this funny little bunker out the front of the base. JS, I got some bad news for you. Oh, God. It's not Vikings. What? It's Metabax, bro. My professional analytic casting skills. <laughs> What's happened? Got to support those ground troops. Um, Damn it. But unfortunately, that is going to play right into the hands of a Borsern here with his many, many Void Rays incoming. Yep, two on the field, three on the field, and uh, one almost on the field, and then an additional three building at the moment. So... A Borson really just is starving more gas, which is why he's thrown down his third base down the bottom of the map, but it is about to be spotted by Ceiling Cat, and with no defense there, Ceiling Cat might be able to cancel the whole thing. He might be able to indeed, and I don't know if they're going to be able to have enough forces to actually react to this. Disky's coming now, but uh, is he going to be able... Are they targeting this down? They're targeting down pylons at the moment. I think they might need to hit this before they get retaliated on, which is... Coming very soon. To be interested, if I was a Boston, I think. I don't know. Do you want to show your Void Rays? He's going to show them. That's happening. Yep, that is definitely happening. I think the Ceiling Cat was worried about warp ins, but um, no warp ins happening when you've got four Stargates. No. He, does he even have warp tech? I don't think he does. He, does. he doesn't have any units. He's got, apart from the eight Void Rays that are on the field, he is going pure Void. Oh my god. And that is going to have them freaking the freak out right now. Let's yep. see what we've got. We've got Vikings instantly added to the queue here, but um, Mars Spider is unfortunately supply blocked. He needs to get a few SCVs down right now uh, into those, we'll get supply depots up as fast as he possibly can, because this yep. could turn Bad Time City in seconds. And But oh. at the moment, a Borson is waiting back in his base, so perhaps waiting for... 12, which are about to come on the field. Surely 12 sounds like a good number to me. Yeah, that's a pretty solid number. What you got? I got a, just a, a sneaky does void raise. Yeah, does void. Yep. Does o void. <laughs> yeah. Does void's got to do some damage. And for a second there, my commentary went a little bit walking. I went, he needs uh, <laughs> Vikings immediately. <laughs> Dude world, loves me some Christopher Walken. The world's worst. I put this Viking up my ass <laughs> for 12 years. Is there any way we could replace you uh -huh. and, and get Mr. Walken to make a guest appearance? Oh, God, I wish. That would be So do I. Fantastic. So much. In I'm... fact, even if we didn't have Christopher Walken, look, what I'm trying to say is we should just replace you. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, well, tough but fair, you know. That's what I think. That's that's my style. All right. Well, I can I can appreciate your uh, honesty. <laughs> and Borson, he's disagreed with us in that a does voids are enough. He's instead gone uh, sixteen. Sixteen's the key here, and it's <laughs> oh moving God. out across the map. But at the same time, 
Fire Monkey's moving out, and Fire Monkey's do have a pretty nice amount of Marines here. Is this going to be a base race? Is this I think what this it is. is? Those voids are going to hit, and it's going to be at the absolute worst time for Fire Monkey's. Uh, and they're kind of screwed. If they go back, it's going to be too late because their base is destroyed. They, I think it's going to force them into a base race situation. Oh my god, this is definitely going to be a base race. Yep, and that's what they're doing, and that is the absolute correct move to make in this situation, but regrettably there is one tank there, so Fire Monkeys need to stim forth and take out that tank before it does too much damage to their forces. And that is what they've done again, and now it's base race time. That's looking pretty good. Yeah, I think they have enough to get down and into this base. Get down, get funky, get loose, get crazy. These Void Rays are absolutely tearing up the joint. There are a couple of Marines wow. here, but they are not going to do jack to this massive force. What are we talking about here? We're talking 14 Void Rays now. They managed to take out two in total, which is just not enough. But um, it's really going to come down in the end to who can actually defend and... I think a ball zone is now going to be able to use some of these void rays defensively, or at least he's going to try. And but doing it on this ramp is actually probably the best possible maneuver. Out come the uh, SCVs here. They are getting shredded. But uh, Ceiling Cat really needs to deal with these void rays up the top of this ramp right yeah, now. Yeah. For every Marine that's lost, it's going to make it pretty much impossible to, once this base race scenario is over, if, he, if they ever want to return back home to deal with these, these uh, 15 voids or 13, um, without those marines, it's going to make it really, really hard to deal with. Okay, now here comes the even harder part of this base race, is that Disky has this base down here, which is just at the moment being peppered uh. with cannons. <laughs> there are thousands and thousands of cannons going down. I think he's realized what's happening here and what yep. is going to occur, and that he's has preparing. become an impenetrable fortress of solitude. Yeah, considering that uh, Borsan has been going pure void, he's been gassed up all game, but as you can see, he's got 5k minerals in the bank, so he can drop about a bajillion cannons and still have some change left over. Yeah, he could basically take this entire uh, map part, I don't know, this base part here, all the way up yep. to the ramp and still have money left over if he wanted to. Yeah, these void rays are gonna try and take them down, and I, I don't know how many marines are actually left here. There's only a handful, or is there? The, no, I don't think there are. There's like one. Yeah, that. GG. So the GGs have come down. Fire monkeys have not been able to uh, win this base race scenario, and that was just really unfortunate. They were caught out of position completely and sort of forced into a base race scenario that they probably weren't looking to put themselves in. No, definitely not. So some sneaky play there by. Sega, but uh, ultimately effective. Well done to them. They are through to the semi-finals. Yep. Commiserations to the Fire Monkeys. Valiantly fought. Yeah, but... great competitors this season. Yeah, and as always, they are. So, yep. big thank you to them for participating in the tournament this year and every year. Um, but thanks for watching. Congratulations to Sega, and we'll see you in the semi-finals. See you then.